And uh, there's several different subjects that we can uh, that we're going to be touching on today, primarily side chains. And also we're going to touch on the open bazaar. So I want to kind of start with the real big picture of things. Let's assume that our viewers are relatively new to blockchain. They got a basic idea of what it is. And so, you know, what is a side chain? What does that mean? Right. So side chains is a um, central topic, the, the central hot topic right now in the uh, research of blockchains. It's, it's a set of open questions. It's something that hasn't yet been resolved fully. Um, but let's take it from the start and see what really it uh, it concerns and what it is about. Um, so currently in the ecosystem of, of blockchains and cryptocurrencies, there is many different blockchains, not just Bitcoin that many people first hear about, but there's also Ethereum, there's Cardano, there's Ethereum Classic and hundreds of other cryptocurrencies. Um, there's cryptocurrencies which live on different blockchains, uh, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic itself have other tokens that live within those blockchains. Uh, and in general, it's a, it's a large ecosystem of many different um, blockchains that, uh, that work, each, each of them works um, individually in an isolated way. So the, the question with sidechains, the central question there is, can we trans transmit information from one blockchain to the next or from one blockchain to another? Can we pass on some, some information from one blockchain to another? Can we pass on value? Uh, because blockchains are a lot about financial value. Uh, can, we, can we move value from one blockchain to another? So this is the, the high level question that we're trying to answer there. Um, and uh, the, the idea there is um, we would like to have some sort of interoperability between different cryptocurrencies. Um, for instance, um, it would be nice if um, somebody would be able to write an Ethereum smart contract, um, which would be able to process events that can happen on a different blockchain, for instance, Cardano or Bitcoin. Uh, currently, this is not possible to do in a decentralized way, and sidechains are aiming to solve that. Um, so that's a high-level picture. And then I, um, I should mention that um, one of the central uh, features that are planned for Cardano, and they are central in its architectural design as well, is the fact that um, in Cardano, uh, we are planning to have multiple blockchains. So Cardano itself um, is planned to be a network of blockchains uh, of which um, maybe you've heard of, of two layers the settlement layer and the computational layer and in essence what we want to do with sidechains there is allow these layers or blockchains to communicate with one another and to be able to um, allow the users to transfer value between um, the multiple layers of Cardano. So it's a central piece of technology for Cardano itself and, and necessary for it uh, in, in the final form that we envision for Cardano. So I understand that side chains are not fully fleshed out yet. Uh, you're working on them, but I have a follow-up question. Um, we were watching your, by the way, if you haven't watched uh, Dionysi's whiteboard video, I would highly recommend it. It is a classic and it has far less views than it should have. Um, this, this thing should be viral in the next couple of years. I mean, if people are really interested in the Cardano project, I know Charles Hoskinson did a great whiteboard video, but Dionysi's also did a great whiteboard video. We really appreciate it. And it, I think it was very succinct, but following that question. So if side chains are, if the side chain research proves to be very viable and they're implemented in the future, how, how does that work with different blockchains having different block times? So, you know, Bitcoin takes around 10 minutes to finish a block and while Cardano takes around 20 seconds. So how are side chains going to work and interoperate cryptocurrency assets between both chains while maintaining a certain level of but basically eliminating time delay. How does that work? Right. So that's a good question. Actually, very interesting. Um, so you would have to take the parameters of the blockchains that are communicating into account. So if you were to transfer some information from one blockchain to, to another, both the confirmation times of, of these both blockchains would take it would be taken into account in the time it would be needed to to make this transmission of information. So um, what you would do when you want to transmit some sort of piece of information from one blockchain to the next, 
um, be it um, some sort of event or be it uh, some monetary value. Um, in terms of time, what happens is you should make first a transaction on the source blockchain. Um, so by the way, I will be using the terms source blockchain and destination blockchain to speak about the chain that produces the information and the chain that consumes the information. But this doesn't mean that um, that these are designated blockchains specifically that are only allow only allowing information to leave them and only allow information to enter them. Of course, in an ecosystem where blockchains would be uh, interconnected in this manner, any chain could function as a source or as a, de or as a destination for different events. Um, so to get back to your time question, um, the way this would work is first in the source blockchain, you would um, create a transaction which would um, issue the information, propagate that information uh, and record it on that ledger. And then you would have to wait for that transaction to be confirmed on that blockchain. So if the source blockchain is slow, then this confirmation is, is going to be necessarily slow to confirm. Um, so if you're um, emanating some, some information from the, from the Bitcoin blockchain, um, then you would need, to, and, and you want some security of, let's say, a level of six blocks, um, then you would need to wait about an hour until this information has been confirmed on the, on the Bitcoin blockchain until you're able to consume that information on, uh, on your receiving chain. And um, there's a lot of details that go into uh, the timing and how quickly it can be done. Uh, and this really depends on the various parameters of the source blockchain. If it's a proof of work chain, if it's a proof of stake chain, how long is the epoch of, their, of these chains and what is your desired security level. But definitely something that we can say is that sidechain transactions or transactions that move value or information across chains are going to be definitely slower than a, a transaction that moves value within one chain. So this is definitely something to keep in mind. All right, yeah, so that, that sounds really interesting. So I'm trying to imagine in my mind how this would actually work. So you have the Bitcoin blockchain and there's Bitcoin traveling throughout and there's a finite number of Bitcoin. Let's say right now the number is 17 million and a Bitcoin were to, were to traverse from one network to the other, the source to the destination, as you described it. I love that description. And that Bitcoin leaves the Bitcoin network and now exists in the Cardano network. Is there something that has to be done over there on that Bitcoin network that says this coin is locked in place or something? How does that work? Yes. So uh, because Bitcoin is not willing to make any hard forks or many large upgrades, um, we have to limit the uh, or necessarily limit the features we can build with uh, interoperating with Bitcoin. So we are limited to receiving information from Bitcoin and consuming it somewhere else. Uh, we're not able to send information back to, to Bitcoin as it doesn't ha have support for this kind of consumption and uh, it would be difficult to suggest that they add it. Um, but any, any blockchain that has some sort of smart contract support, including Cardano, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, are able to receive such events. So now for uh, the transfer of value, the way it will work is exactly as you described. Uh, on, the, on the Bitcoin blockchain, one would create a transaction which locks up a certain amount of coins uh, and, and associates that locking with uh, some metadata, which Bitcoin really doesn't interpret in any particular way. And then this locking, this event that occurred in the Bitcoin blockchain can, after being confirmed in a transaction there, it can be propagated to any blockchain that wants to consume it and react to it appropriately. So in that event where, where you lock up your funds with a transaction, let's say you lock up your Bitcoin in the Bitcoin blockchain, the metadata that you would include uh, contains um, your receiving key on the Cardano chain if you want to send that money to Cardano. And it also includes a designator that this transaction is intended to be received by Cardano and not some other blockchain so that uh, we, can, uh, we, we can protect against replay attacks where uh, transactions is replayed ac across multiple blockchains. Uh, once those funds are locked in uh, with that metadata and confirmed on the Bitcoin blockchain, then this can be picked up um, by the Cardano blockchain, for example, and reacted to uh, in, in any way that the creator of a Cardano smart contract wishes to, to react to it including the um the creation of new tokens on the on the cardano side